my comments are on two levels. Uh, first, um, I want to address some of the procedural issues that our colleague, uh, Mr. Canisteri, has uh, appropriately raised in terms of the budget impact and the budget process. And then I would like to mention uh, the rationale for this program. First, with regard to the impact on the budget, uh, the amendment that I am proposing is budget neutral. On the state budget, it's budget neutral. It merely takes the funds that we had originally proposed for an increase in safety net and other cash benefits for welfare recipients and moves it into the welfare work pro I'm sorry, the youth employment program. No increase in net costs. It's a transfer of funds. With regard to the concern that the Senate might have an objection or that this might hold up the budget process, uh, I can assure you that I have discussed this in length with the senator that has the same jurisdiction over my area. And uh, in the Senate, she advises me, is very supportive of this concept. It's not just empty words or, or concepts, because you may recall in the Senate's one house budget bill, they did not include any additional funds for an increase in cash welfare benefits. Therefore, I am confident that should we amend the budget on this issue, our good friends in the Senate will be more than happy to also amend the budget bill in the Senate chambers. And that this straightforward amendment can be done in both houses well before the budget deadline. With regard to the rationale, uh, as you may recall, in 2009 and 2010, New York State increased the cash benefits for welfare recipients by 20 percent, even though we were in the depths of one of our nation's worst recessions. As a result of this increase, New York State currently offers some of the highest cash benefits in the nation. According to the Urban Institute's 2010 Welfare Rules Data Book, which compares all states, New York welfare benefits for a family of three were 46 percent higher than Pennsylvania, 45 percent higher than New Jersey, 42 percent higher than Ohio, 16 percent higher than Massachusetts. And this was before this budget proposal. In fact, the only state that is consistently higher than us is Alaska, and they have their own separate higher poverty limit reflecting the higher cost of living. Our proposed budget that we're being asked to conserve today would increase welfare cash assistance by 5 percent on July 1st, another 5 percent on October 1st. After the proposed increase in benefits, based on the data from the Urban Institute, we would have the highest cash benefits in the nation behind only Alaska. Now, during the special session back in December, you may recall we adopted the uh, Youth Employment Program, a great program that received accolades from both sides of the aisle. Unfortunately, that program was limited and only applied to cities over 62,000 residents and a certain large towns. My proposed budget amendment would expand that program statewide. You may recall last December, our colleagues here expressed their great concern for all poor, disadvantaged, at-risk youth, but we only provided the program for some. This would expand it to all. It would also extend the time period for employers to participate for the very reasons that Assemblywoman People Stokes mentioned. By doing this amendment, I believe we express strong opinions that we need to be fair to our taxpayers. No one in my, virtually nobody in my district or in yours are seeing 10 percent salary increases. In fact, our state employees have a wage freeze. Many of our teachers are facing wage freeze or layoffs. We recently imposed a new tier six that reduced pension benefits. We have a tax cap that's putting severe financial pressure at a time when our employees, our hard-working employees, our state employees, our teachers, and our municipal em employees are not getting raises 
now is not the time to increase cash benefits for welfare recipients by 10 cents, 10 percent. Um, I would also point out that this is a huge new unfunded mandates on governments. County governments and local governments pay 71 percent of the cost of the safety net. This not only increases costs on us, this program, but it multiplies with them. We estimate the cost on local government to be about 24 to 25 million dollars, and those costs hit local governments in the middle of their budget year after they've already adopted the budget. Um, so we not only increase local mandates, but we also disrupt existing local budgets. Fundamentally, if we are serious about welfare reform and helping those in poverty. This budget proposal increases our hand up rather than the hand out. And it helps more youth become employed. It helps break that cycle of welfare dependency and really lays the foundation for our stronger New York. For those reasons, I urge my colleagues to seriously consider this proposed amendment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.